Um, closing off, we have CLCU. And um, closing off, we have SYSU. Okay, so before I start the debate, may I advise and warn of our audience that I, I know this is a crowded room, but please make sure that you don't make any disturbance or noise or any strange actions that disturb the debaters. Okay, so with all that said, without further ado, may I invite our Prime Minister to start to start Jackson, to kick off our course final. Mr. Speaker, it is our belief that partisan politics has spoiled the very essence of democracy, yeah, yeah. has defeated the very purpose of why people came together as a society and came together in a civilized manner to work out what's best for everyone in this very society. And therefore, it is our belief that it is necessary for the government here to stand strong to abolish all part political parties in favor of independent candidates in running for political uh, positions. So what do we mean in this sense? So we mean by there will be no more political parties, no matter whether it's for normal daily running or whether it's for the participation of elections, and only independent candidates can run for political office, meaning to say the Senate and also the House of Representatives. Now, Mr. Speaker, why is this so? We intend to, on the side of opposite uh, or side of government to show you two main arguments. Firstly, we want to talk to you about what's the value of representation in the idea of democracy. And secondly, I'm going to show you con in context how the game of politics has already been changed due to the presence of political parties. Now, on the point of representation, what do we mean? We say that in democracy, right, it's not just about how, how much voice or how loud you are or how much money you have uh, that <coughs> defines who you are and how much political parties or uh, how much political power you should get, right? You see, ultimately, when we come to democracy, the whole idea of representation is how much people or how many people could you represent and could you speak up for at the end of the day so as to advise or advocate what their needs and what their wants are essentially it essentially is. Now, looking at the case of political parties, we see that political parties narrow down the whole idea and the whole concept of uh, agendas and the whole concept of avocation, right? So in the case of, say, the United States, when we have the elephant versus the donkeys, right? So we see that the Democrats are the, the ones don't thank you. The Democrats are the ones that is arguing mainly on liberal context. So what do we mean by arguing mainly liberal context? We have the deeply rooted liberals and we have the uh, moderate liberals, ladies and gentlemen. But on this sense, we, no we notice that and along the side of the Democrats, right? People are ten, uh, people do, don't normally know, thank you, people don't normally see a conservative, a protectionist, don't normally see a, a, a someone that aligns with the principles of uh, protecting and serving America, uh, serving downtown or uh, old town American in the very first place. So in this sense, we want to question, is it true that the Democrats should only represent the people who uh, believe in their own values, who only represent that narrow specific, uh, the, the specification? And, no, no, thank you. And moving on, ladies and gentlemen, it is not just the Democrats and the Republicans that we are seeing, right? In the case of, say, Taiwan politics, there is, yes, two main uh, big... Um, political parties, the, the blue side, uh, blue party and the green party, right? But ladies and gentlemen, before we come to the blue party and green party, we see that there's numerous parties, up to eight of them previously. And what happened? Because the, 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 the red, uh, residuing blue party and green party are the ones that has the uh, bigger financial abilities, are the ones that has the more money and more resources. And at the end of the day, they eat up the rest of the political parties and form these two divided sides. Now, there's a lot of problems with these two divided sides, mainly, firstly, 
You are just telling this nation that our nation is just about these two views, just about this polar, this two bipolar situation. But we see that the, the, the society in today is way much more complex than bipolar situation here. Yeah. However, the politicians that are representing their own political parties cannot cross the line of their uh, bipolarization. And this is why today, in the debate today, we have the government we no thank you, we have the opposition we to realign what this party actually stands for as a whole. So in this sense, we see that there's there should be a wider uh, uh, perspective to it. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, we think that by con by concising or by uh, narrowing down these two uh, po political Sorry. agendas, I think in a second, these two advocates, right? We see ultimately the minorities get ignored, the people yeah. that get smaller get ignored. Who are, is it true that it's only conservatives and liberals that is in the United States of America? No, there are minorities that care solely for the minorities issue, but we don't see the minority issue being the big. It, being the being the main core, core our uh, main point of discussion that we have in American politics nowadays, right? So moving on, before I go on to the second uh, part of my argument, yes, upper house. We think it's a clear assumption to think that everybody's going to actively participate in politics, but we think that's more effective in parties narrow down. We can see what we want and the information we need on the what direction we want to participate in politics. This proves that. Yes, I get your point. So it goes directly into our second argument. So we tell you that there's a change in uh, the game of politics. Originally, we have politics because we want to hear what are the different opinions and different ideas and different avocations that people have in this society. However, I have just shown you in my previous argument that all these different ideas over time due to resource and the congregation of people narrows down into just two or three simple ideologies. But this is not just that, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to show you why is this so. Now, Firstly, the bottom line of choosing a representation here, right, is to represent my needs, to do what I have or do, to do what I want or do what I need, right? But in this sense, if, when there's a political party, say in, in the case of Singapore, right, the, the People's Association Party tells you that when you vote for me, I'll help you renovate your, the place that you're staying, I'll help you build a lift that you can, I'll give you a better parks and better schools. And in the case of the opposition party, because of the less of the financial resource, because the lesser capabilities of, uh, 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 of the stranglehold of uh, influence within the society, they can't do that. So at the end of the day, when you vote for the, when you vote for either parties, the question that comes to your mind is, can this it, was it? Can this particular individual? Do I identify with what his uh, ideologies are? Do I believe in what he uh, what he is believing and what he intends to do? Has to no. The reason why I'm voting for him, Lord Dengue Sedang, the reason why I'm voting for him is because he can give me more leaves, because he can give me a better park, because he can give me a better uh, 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 environment to stay. But the but at the end of the day, that is all down to money and in the very first stage, ladies and gentlemen, we don't think this should be up to the money because the money should be for equal for everybody, not for people who support my very own party. Now, the second thing I want to talk about here, right, is when there is a, when there is a political party here, there's a strong contrast with the individual candidate. Why is that so? Because the individual dies, Mr. Speaker, the political parties are always there. Yeah. So the, we are talking about the legacy of a political party here. So what am I saying? So in the case of, say, oh, in the case of say Taiwanese politics, right? The political parties have been around for over 100 years or some for 60 years. Now, like when you look at the southern parts of Taiwan, they are mostly supporting in the Green, the Democrat Party. Now the Democratic Party, they not only comes out during the election, they have widespread influence throughout your life. The political identity is not isolated, as they say, from the rest of your own identity. Why is that so? The radio is their party, the, the newspaper is their party, the television is their party, everything that in your life has party influence. And Mr. Speaker, at the end of the day, I vote for my party not because I believe in the party's ideology, because my father voted for their party, my aunt, my friends, all my relatives are in their party or support their party. And at the end of the day, I am part of the party due to their legacy. However, my partner will explain to you why voting for the individual candidate itself represents more value for democracy and therefore, in the fight of true democracy, we beg you to support this motion. Thank you.
inclusive democracy is a system that concedes to the fact that not everyone's analytical as we are, that not everyone's caring and absorbed with politics. We think that representative democracy system that maximizes representation, accountability, and participation within a society where different people exist, within a society where in certain cases people simply don't care about politics. We say that that's why their policy entirely fails in the debate, because while they tried to salvage their case by explaining to us possible harms of political parties or in, uh, pol politics in general, we tell you they failed to explain to us why their policy is better than the status quo as a whole. We will prove to you how, firstly, in principle, this is completely degrades the quality of representative democracy. Secondly, how it has unique harms. So let's move on to rebuttals first. Now, two things they came up from a very lovely Prime Minister. He told us firstly the harms, secondly about how in principles how it's bad, right? Firstly regarding harms. He told us about how parties only see have money, therefore they must be corrupt. How how uh, this Correction, sit man. down, how individuals don't get left. Firstly, Mr. Speaker, about the idea of maximization of capital, because parties have a lot of donations, because parties have a lot of money, we think that it's inherent to majority rule. We think that if party gets a lot of donation, if party has a lot of capital, it means that the party is doing good by lobbying to the people, by showing that they deserve help because people support them. That's inevitable to the system of democracy. Sit down. Secondly, we tell you that this is not unique. Even under the model where individuals run for office, the individual with more media exposure, individual with more capital will always succeed under your model exactly. as well. Therefore, okay. we tell you, your model has also the inherent harms that you've explained. That's why you fail. Right? Secondly, in terms of representation, he told us how this is bad because other nations will only think that Korea has two views because there's only two parties in Korea, the, how minorities will always get ignored. I have many responses for this. Number one, Mr. Speaker, we think it's a complete false and assumption to say that, okay, only two parties exist, therefore only two views exist. We think that a lot of the times, other countries also do have unique parties, such as religious parties, such as the like, Green parties, who suggest contribute a very unique, different form of policies and ideas. We think that's the status quo. And we also can see to the fact that in the status quo, we have individuals running for offices when these individuals, you know, reject to become in a party. We think that that's completely okay when these individuals choose. Secondly, but more importantly, we, we tell you, Mr. Speaker, that parties only suggest spectrums. We think that what parties do is they show a big guidelines of a liberal idea and conservative idea, while within these guidelines and spectrums, difference within the liberal parties, difference within candidates within conservative, conservative parties exist. We think that individuals are completely capable of choosing a very, very liberal guy who says, you know, uh, don't have any, like, big governments, but a slightly liberal guy, a guy who's in between. You know, the individual is perfectly capable to that, do that. Lastly, on the idea of minority, we, t we tell you, firstly, the principle of democracy is that you uphold majority rule. Therefore, it's quite inherent and inevitable in certain cases when minorities fail to gather enough vote and support, it does get, in a way, up less up upheld uh, according, uh, compared to the majority rule. Okay. But secondly, more importantly, we tell you that's simply an assumption to say minorities always get ignored under party politics. We've seen the example of America where gay marriage was passed in certain states, even even if it was a minority decision, because parties see enough incentive to gather you know, minority votes, because parties see enough incentive to uphold minority rules, even in principle. So let's move on to my arguments. Firstly, regarding the representative democracy, how it how parties you know, uphold quality of representative democracy. Firstly, regarding, uh, Mr. Speaker, we believe there are three things to uphold in this debate. Firstly, representation. Secondly, participation. And uh, lastly, accountability. So let's firstly talk about how parties better uphold the quality of accountability. We think that, Mr. Speaker, hence when a, co when a co congressman makes promises and advertises ideas, people elect him for that, right? We think that a lot of times, what people see in party politics is that they see, like, as I've explained, the guideline of spectrum, right? Ideas, right? We think that a lot of the times, people trust this person to do what he said he would do. Secondly, more importantly, we think that a lot of people trust him to do the line of policy that he promised. We think that a lot of the times in liberal democracy, people don't simply look at, like, tax, security, like, economy, because it's simply too complicated for a lot of the people. A lot of the people simply, it's in, incapable for the politicians to elaborately say whatever I'm gonna do or everything that I'm going to do in my office therefore people trust this person for the line guideline of the spectrum of the policies sit down we tell you when so when this person gets elected into office what happens is that 
and number one, parties have better checks and balances on these individuals to, to for the individual to do what he promised to do. For example, a liberal guy elect, gets elected in the Congress. He says he's going to do liberal line of policies, but when a party is there, we think that that checks an addition of accountability is given to him because he has more incentive, uh, added incentive, oh, added no. burden to follow the line of the guidelines of the policies of the parties. Secondly, we think that once the election is done, people simply have no say in whatever he does. We think that that mandate is never given if simply individuals say, oh, I'm going to do this, 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 so let, let so you should elect me. But then when in compared to the situation, when a party has a clear guideline of a liberal line and a conservative line, the mandate is somehow given to him. So when people elect him for that, we think that the added accountability, added checks and balances are still given, which is a better case under our model. Secondly, regarding participation, uh, I've explained, sit down. I've explained Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that not, not everyone is an expert regarding this. We think that apolitical lady comes from people being simply too busy to check and follow every single thing that the politician does. We think that the complexity of political agendas are in a way simplest, simplicized or simpled down under party politics. Because now parties give two things. Firstly, clear guideline and clear spectrum. And lastly, clarity, right? We think that Hence, a lot of individuals, the entering barrier for voting, entering barrier for participating in politics is lowered, is lessened when we have parties, you know, acting as big and successful, success, successful actors when it comes to liberal democracy. So we think that a lot of the times, rather than me simply thinking that this guy will do everything, me simply thinking, oh, these tax agendas, these security agendas are simply too um, complicated for me. You know, a lot of this People simply choose and trust these parties to do whatever they promised to do. That were therefore a lot of times uh, more people participate, more people are engaged within politics because these parties function as gathering opinion polls yeah. as, as well as showing guidelines. We tell you, therefore, in terms of firstly participation and in terms of secondly accountability, party politics are successful, which fail under their model. We're very happy to oppose. Theoretically speaking, right. However, let's put in, put the, all those uh, all those uh, consideration into a real context and see what is so wrong happening in political parties nowadays, and why the diversion among the party itself is actually problematic, and why political parties become a place of elite club where the entrance for uh, mass majority participation is actually very high. Yeah, and yeah. It's not going to represent yeah. all as they demonstrated, and why the shady political parties actually jeopardizing the real real spirit of democracy and they manipulate the political game. So that is what we see a severe problem in the status quo, and that ultimately going to disincentivize individuals to participate in the process of democracy. So that is the biggest problem we see lacking from the whole analysis from Dohi. So for four rebuttals before I move on to my constructives. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, they talk uh, talk talk to us about why they have it, uh, the in the status quo individuals are uh, actually running for office for a presidential election or for a congressman and so on. However, ladies and gentlemen, what is so uh, so different between individual running and the current political party system is that political parties political parties are able to mobilize more social resources than one single individual. Even if you this individual is Murdoch, we, uh, Murdoch we're talking about. However, by having political uh, political parties that mean, uh, that gather a group of people who actually could mo mobilize more volunteers, to mobilize more media resources than that single candidate. So that is why we did have never seen from the history that individual candidates actually be elected into office without the without being coerced in the party line in the first place. And secondly, when they talk about individuals that have the ability to choose, just as Chen Lim told you, what is so wrong about party, uh, the team line of a party, and why it's actually narrowed into a certain scenario, and that is too abstract and allow too much room for uh, politician interpretation. So first of all, we see that, you know, uh, for example, in um, American democracy, we simply see conservative and liberal, and we simply see dem Democrats and Republicans. When their team line are so, uh, uh, simply a big hint and fluffy word talking about, yay, we care about, uh, we believe in free market, we care about sit down, 
or we, or we care about the demo, uh, or we care about our representation. However, how they are actually enacting it is not exactly what we see from a status quo, what, uh, which I will elaborate in my constructive. And lastly, when they talk about uh, when they, uh, people who, uh, when uh, when they talk about the com uh, complexity of political agendas, when white people are not expertise, so that is why we need political parties who man ma uh, manipulate over a group of people who know politics. Exactly, that go nicely to our to our point. Why necessarily po a political party become an elite club, and why necessarily the discussion are limited to a certain group of people, and the polit uh, political parties are ultimately serving them? So three constructive. First of all, what is so wrong about politics? Chen has told you from a general sense about election and how the team line is going to coerce the candidates and how the people are not necessarily be represented. Let's go deeper into and see what happening in the status quo. Take an example to see the dem uh, dem uh, 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 Democrats, in, uh, dem uh, sorry, Republicans in the United States. You see a clear party division between the between certain Democrats and uh, uh, another. For example, the Tea Party. They demonstrated uh, you uh, mobilize all capital. Uh, capitals and how they actually uh, uh, advocate for that right, deriving from the principle that uh, uh, Republicans uh, uphold, for example, free market, for example, the the uh, the, uh, the loose control of government. So that is why we see within party itself, it becomes a heated game between the people who are who are of the uh, most ca uh, political capital. So that the so, uh, political party actually upgrade that uh, upgrade upgrade that game game into a, a limited amount of people. For those vast voters they are talking about, yeah. are actually sit down left behind in their scenario. And secondly, why it actually jeopardizes in, uh, incentive uh, representation? We see that as I told you before, the entrance for uh, for a political party actually become very high. Why so? We see that how people actually go into a political party and how they are going to like get to the position they wanted. They actually uh, evaluate them from the, uh, from the capital they are going to have, from a social status they have in the status quo. However, when they talk about they can represent a mass majority in the society, which are as normal as you and me, maybe I'm not sure about opposition. As we say that in the status quo, most people don't really have that uh, political capital for them to leverage among the political parties. So that is what we see in the status quo, that people are, uh, like mass majority are actually being jeopardized in a sense. And secondly, when they talk about accountability, which I feel extremely funny, right? Why so? When they took accountability, so who are they going to be responsible for? When the people from, uh, when the people, uh, when the mass majority is not going to enter into a party, when people who are actually taking a leading role in those political parties are those, uh, are those of already high social status, already of very high prestige. So who are they being represented to? Who are they feeling accountable to? So that is why I say, sit down, democracy has still derived from its very sense into, a, uh, into an individual ga elite game between people from higher social yeah. rankings. And secondly, why we say that uh, why we say our proposal is actually going to work and why it actually boosts democracy in a sense. Why so? By abolishing political parties, actually, uh, for the first place, we bring everything back to where it started. Maybe the opposition side will question, right? When you have individual candidates and so on, those who are uh, who, mo who have more social capitals, who are of more wealth, they are still able to mobilize resources and they are going to manipulate people. However, ladies and gentlemen, what is so precious about individual candidates is that they are not going to be coerced in a, t a narrow team line that the political party endowed them with. Why so? We say that in the past, the political wow. team line sit down actually serve as a restriction for individual candidates. Uh, they have no other choice but to convert to this team line so that they can enter into the next stage of politics. However, by diminishing down these barriers and restrictions of individual candidates, they actually could vote, they actually could uh, like voice out to see where their target groups are and actually trying to uh, trying to fit to mo uh, most people's needs and make that into a consistent uh, part of his election uh, election strategy. So that is what we see so precious about individual candidates and how the individuality being represented by the, and the mass majority. Yeah. And secondly, when we say this is actually turning back to the real essence of democracy, we say that in democracy, we're so spec, we're so precious about democracy is that everybody actually has a say in the decision making process, and everybody has the possibility to make the, make the policy and the government serving for them in the first place. We see that by giving individuals, by making individual candidates accountable, they are more, they are, uh, they are directly to be responsible for their people in the first place, rather than the political party, which they used to have to stick to the line, or they will be expelled from that party once and for all. So that is why we say by by uh, by 
diminishing the barrier of political party without they have to be accountable for the political party and party line and party legacy as Chen Lin talked about. We say that they allow more room for individuals to actually go enforce certain things and go pursue their real political uh, uh, real political arguments in the status quo. We stand strong, uh, we stand proud to propose. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, members of the House, coming from opening opposition today, we believe that, in a sense, political parties aren't magical. They're not the panacea to all the problems of our society. But in a sense, that we feel that political parties are doing their basic role in society and providing us with the basic need for the representation and the upholding of our governmental systems, and providing the basic needs for why democracy runs and why democracy is actually effective. We believe that we need these political parties in, the, in existence to consistently keep and these people actually participating and for the system to roll on its own. Yeah. Coming from second speaker today, I'm going to clear up a few things. I'm going to talk about basically on a level of like harms, of why abolishing these political parties will bring more harms, so actually equal, par par equal opportunity to participate as a legislator, and how it's going to actually bring harm to any necessary change that can occur in the political arena. But before I do that, I'm going to take a look at what they brought today, kind of rebut to some of the rebuttals they brought to our case, then rebut directly to their case. So protecting our case a little bit. Bringing up rebuttals, they talk about like how like individuals are currently, then I sit down, individuals are currently running, but political parties can mobilize more. We believe that it's not in the sense, there's no unique harm in the, in the sense when it's an individual versus an individual, it's still the same problem. We believe that when political parties exist, they can actually narrow it down, they can actually, when they narrow it down, they do provide some, somewhat an information and provide a political knowledge on the basic knowledge to the people so what they can have. It's actually provides provision yeah. of basic information to not everybody being absorbed into the system. We told you from the start that not everybody is, you know, analyzing politics all the time. Not everybody is looking at it, what everything is. But we need to actually have Precisely a system so. where they can actually get stuff sit down, where they can get the basic information and the basic knowledge of what the lines are and what the political system is. We think the political parties are the most effective way to actually represent this information and to pass on and transfer this information. Now, they also talked about like red hype. Now, moving on to, I want to talk about basically what they brought up. So, we talk about like you know the accountability and the elite clubs. What we think about the accountability itself is that within the parties, that the individuals can actually pressure the, the parties can actually have pressure within it. They have to have continuous pressure to actually continue their role and actually have their part play part in the in the government. We think that this pressure itself allows for the accountability to stand on these parties so that they can actually have some checks, so that they can, can actually do whatever they want to. And they also kept talking about like right about how they only want individual candidates, how they want about 20, 50 individual candidates. We believe that having all of these individual candidates without any kind of basic line provided by political parties oh, yes. is even is even more no basic line, even more confusing to the people as a whole. We think that we need these necessary wants of the people and that we need these parties to actually provide and the, the transfer this information for people to have a check and people actually know what's going well, on. Sit down, sir. And they talked about like how, you know, they talk, the first speaker even talks about how only certain parties have money, so the big parties all succeed. We think that even in the sense, my first speaker told you, right, in the sense that they do have the money that's actually coming from the donations and majority support. But when the people actually see that this party isn't actually doing something good, just because of the fact they provide so, more so. parts, that they provide more money, doesn't mean that people will consistently actually keep supporting them. We think that's a lot of different levels sit down. We think that if these people will check them, keep them in check. What we also see is that on the same level, again, when individuals with more money come out and say, we're going to provide more parts to you, we're going to, I'm going to beat the individual because I have a lot more money, it's not a unique harm. We think that their model fails because yeah. it's not a unique harm. Now, moving on 
to our level today. Oh, before you go on, sir. Sit down. What we wanted to talk about is that basically on a level, you know, about representation, about why people actually get more representation from it. We think that when people need it, actually, when we have parties, we have a more efficient measure of when these people are actually talking. Because even in the example of the United States, in the Senate, when certain parties are talking, it's not just about infighting and certain only pushing across. But when somebody is talking, they have to have, they get that certain level of protection during their time when they're actually speaking. And we think that this is a more efficient level of when there are parties actually doing it. Even within that level, we think that if you only have individuals doing it and all these different, you know, not party parties have to participating, we think that's a clear harm and even more confusing within that level of harm itself. itself. So, now moving on today to the exact harm, to why this is a harm to equal opportunity to participate to oh, someone yeah. who wants to participate as a legislator. Now we believe that they, they keep saying you know, about only the parties with big money, right? But we tell you clearly from our side that individuals who have more capital and media exposure have more, so. le more room and more level for us to keep standing of clear opportunity to overtake the system. Now what happens is that when these, this happens is that a vicious cycle of the elites, the higher economic class, continually gaining more, con more uh, control of the society. Only the rich people, only the rich individuals continually, continually over harming these other individuals who might want to participate. It's exactly the same. Yeah from their model. And before I move on, continue, yes sir. Sir, Mr. Barack Obama and Ms. Hillary Clinton were two excellent candidates representing two different views of the society that's coming forward. But ultimately, they don't get the chance to compete fairly because they were from the same party and there was only one candidate. Is that fair? Is that how? We tell you in that sense that it's allow for the party to actually decide and the people actually decide who they want to actually represent our party. We believe the Democratic Party brought the idea to the people and they told you these people are actually fighting for themselves on the same. But we tell you that if in the sense from the start, if Hillary Clinton thought it was so unfair, then she didn't have to have to be from that party. That's really not irrelevant to this so, debate. Sit down, sir. Now we tell you on a level that we think that it's harmful. We tell you that if you want necessary change in the political system, if they say the political system is so harmed and corrupt and you want this necessary necessary change to occur, you actually have to have these, you know, up level where it's a more fair level of participation. We think that actually only having the individual participate on level is the same because the rich people consistently sit there and they don't block, they block any kind of change of occurring because they continually use their funds for mobilization when poor individuals cannot actually have any funds to mobilize and they only have no volunteers. We think that's a systematic that's level, so. sit down sir, on a level where it's very inefficient to have any kind of change in that strata. Now why is this actually differentiated when we do have political parties in the system? When we do have political parties in the system, we have candidates go through a screening system, a process where they get rated for their past achievements in politics and what they can actually provide for our society. So what they've actually done on a level of a municipal level before they move on to the state, before they move on to the National Congress. They get rated for what they get pushed across if they have actually done good. And we have this rating system where we can see what this politician can actually provide for our society. It's clearly more efficient when this person has proven that he has these goods and he has provided these benefits and then he gets rated and graded for this rather than just being the fact we don't know what this person is. It's just a random person coming into our society. Like coming from Korea, we have a clear example of a clear presidential candidate who used to be a professor at, at teaching science. We think that this is clear that we don't know what he can provide for society. But other people coming from the parties, they have shown throughout their political career of what good and what harm they have brought to our society. We think it's clearly a better level to what they're being chosen and what people can actually judge on these people. We think that it's on a level that these people can be more clearly judged in our system and we think that they can clearly choose upon this idea. So coming from opening opposition today, we think that political parties aren't like magical, aren't that aren't the best thing in the world. But we think that they do have a holding in our society, that they should stay there because of the fact that they provide the basic information and the basic opportunity for people to participate and to people to represent represent themselves even more. We think that this basic existence is very important for the accountability, for the representation and for the participation of people. We think that people participate more when they actually have a basic knowledge and a basic line of what they can actually choose from. And for these reasons and coming clearly from me about why it's harmful for just individuals with money. Clearly, we think we can post. Thank you. That's the leader of opposition. Now, coming down to the second half of the debate, may I invite the member of governors? mainly tell us about how our policies is actually going to bring us back to the root of democracy. Remember, democracy is that it means that every person has a representation in their states and that can contribute to the society. Great. And what today has, the opposition has told us is mainly, uh, I have three buttons on their policy. It actually says that 
with individuals running, even though nowadays with these circumstances, individuals are running, but uh, parties are mon monopolizing other resources. Yes, we say that this is this is the case because what the party is actually getting is all the resources from the society, and therefore the party is actually giving more harm, like corruptions and money politics, and actually lowers down what you have been saying about accountability. Because what you have been telling about is actually the importance of money politics. And the second one, you have been talking about that big parties have have more money. Uh, you have rebuttals about big parties have more money so that they can actually monopolize it. But the fact is, what you're saying that this, the donations are not coming from the majority of the citizens, but what they're coming are actually from uh, one single or, uh, or minorities of wealthy people like bankers so, or tycoons so that they can contribute donations to the big party and help them to, to help them enhance their vested interest so that they can take a greater part and take advantage from this policy. Yeah, yeah. And here, the third third question is about, uh, you have been saying that oh, political parties they have a better political line that people can follow and they help, help the society with better contribution. But we're doubting that are those political lines correct and are they misleading other people on that? Because you can't say that politicals, uh, political parties are always doing the, the truth in which I will elaborate in my arguments later. Because we believe that individuals have the rationality to understand what is right and what is wrong. And with, with all those uh, individual candidates uh, are electing for individual process, we, we believe that this is related to my argument, which means that um, with this with this policy, we can have a better check and balance function, and we actually lead to promote equality and diversity. First, let me tell you a more uh, explanation on what is actually a political party. A political party is actually a group of people who have the same interests and same pursuit of uh, goals for them to uh, pursue in the participation of politics games. However, what we're saying that they are actually a dominant group of people who actually sacrifice most of individual or different interests of people from different spectrums. And therefore, they actually, after the, after the several discussions, they actually focus on one main principle, on one main goal Go to ahead. pursue in the future. So actually, there is sacrifice of diversity here. Okay, so yeah. what we're saying is that uh, when we are comparing a party to uh, the public, which means a whole society, yeah. which means that which means that the party is actually a minority when they are comparing to the public, which is actually the majority. So what we're talking about is actually the circumstances is suffering from the elite politics, which means that a minority yeah. of people is actually dominating the whole country's destiny, and therefore it has actually sacrificed majorities majorities. Um, interest. What we're saying that our responsible government is actually a collective unit so that we can purchase the highest good of the country. So what we're doing is actually to protect the majority's interest. And what we're doing right now with this policy is actually to encourage more individuals, oh, more individuals so that they can show up, they can, they can express their opinions and let it express to the individuals so that they have, have the right to choose. Let me take an example. Let's so that's about elephants and donkeys. Well, there's two parties, there's mainly two principles and two interests. However, if there are 10 people, we will have 10 interests, and it is shown on the table, and people will actually choose from them. And this will actually lead to my later past, why I would say that it, this will decrease money politics and other, other bad, uh, harmful consequences like corruption and uh, disputes coming from two parties. First, um, I, I will bound back to my check and balance argument, which means that well, if we are going to promote our policy today, um, with individuals, they have their own principles. Like, for example, I'm a teacher, I'm an engineer, I'm a fisherman. I have my own pursuit and I have my own different angle towards the same issue, the same issue with different angles. So, therefore, what I'm talking about is actually that this benefit is actually going to exceed all the benefits yeah. coming from the party division, which is actually only two principles or two vested interests that are showing on the table. And people actually have no right to choose because they're the only two elect election uh, on, on the table. So therefore, with individuals representing their own their own functions and their own characteristics, what they're doing is actually paying the job of the division of labor of the society, which yeah. means that they will show, they, they will express, all, they will represent all different kinds of individual groups and spectrums in the society and help them to express that. Which we, make, we think that this is actually having a more accountability and a more check and balance function as, um, as opposed to my opposition has said today. They think that political parties have more uh, more restriction on on their on their presidents or on their candidates because the the the, the, the party is actually will will try to will try to protect their face or try to protect their principle so that they will let their their uh -huh. their, their candidates to win. However, what we see in the status quo is that so many parties are actually 
uh, uh, protecting or even spoiling or hiding all those scandals happening from their candidates. And they're not actually making an effort to do so because they know that they're the only dominant party in, in the political game. The only dominant party. So there's no one there's no one doing the superficial thing. But what, what we're doing right now is actually that if we suggest individuals to go to the political games with all those um with their own group, with the people they're representing their own group and also the public yeah. supervision, they will actually are better and more effective and people actually have more diversity and choices to choose. If they for example there are ten people running, if they don't like to two of them, they can actually choose the rest of eight of them. However, with two main parties, if they uh. don't like the only one party, what they can do, they have no choice. They don't like another party, but they have no choice but have to choose another party. This is actually against the rule of democracy. So what we're saying now is actually that the second point, um, uh, according from uh, uh, Le Pong, from, from a French economist and psychologist, it says that a person is very wise. However, when a group of people get together, get becoming more foolish, because what they're doing is actually they are suffering from the emotion and suffering from all those kind of patriotic and girls and and the way of their thinking is actually twisted because they can't think, they can't think rationally. They think that, oh, I actually belong to the party, even though I can express different opinions. It doesn't matter because I have to follow the principle of my party. So actually, it is not working. Uh, what I'm saying that is this kind of psychology, it shouldn't be taking place in a political because political is so important it related to all our benefit of society. The third part I want to talk about is actually uh, the political party's harm and actually affects the check and balance. Because what we're seeing in the same school is that the two parties, for example, the, uh, the Democratic and the Republican Party, they're actually, what they're doing is not to promote their own principle or their own policy. What they're doing is actually saying other people's scandal. Like Sarah Palin had a daughter who has never get married and get pregnant. And like Mitt Romney have uh, taxes of billions of, but they have never paid that before. So it's actually not about politics anymore. It's actually about disrespecting people. And the second way is about money politics. People are actually suffering from money politics. And the third one, what we're going to talk about will be uh, corruption. So I have no time to talk about. So I will let my partner, I will let my partner analyze it further. And so today we're proudly uh, propose this policy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, what we are saying is that a political party system is not the most perfect system in democracy. What we are saying is that a political party system is not a system which is worse than any other system that exists in, in democracy. Yeah. And that is why this side of the house is very proud to oppose this ridiculous motion. Because ultimately, we still believe that political party system has its necessity to exist because it can serve the purpose of helping uh, helping the citizens to better participate in political uh, in, in, in democracies. And this is the direction that we're going to extend this debate to. I will bring many talk about two extensions. Firstly, why political party have, have its own purpose to exist and why it can help uh, uh, citizens to be better participate in, in democracies. Secondly, I'm going to talk about why actually the existence of political party system can lead to better check and balance system in democracies. Before, uh, before that, I want to point out two, two major uh, problems that exist in their case. Because closing government keep talking about, well, how the majority, how the value, how the uh, political appeal of the majority will overwhelm the, the uh, political appeal of the minority. But however, we heard no analysis or whatsoever why actually under their model, such problem can be tackled when everyone uh, actually engaged in, in politics. And secondly, they talk about the diversity of interests. Again, no analysis or whatsoever why actually diversity of interests can be fully sorry. expressed under their proposals. I would rather rebut these points in my uh, extension. So basically, my rebuttals and my sub substantive will be packaged together uh, before that, yeah. So when you uh, keep talking about how political party actually has a reason to exist and the party's patient, you neglect the very factor to talk about the legacy and the, how the big influence of certain political party to exist under certain ideology. And that actually limits the possibilities of other representation. So how are you going to tackle I think I will explain this point in my extensions. Listen carefully. So firstly, my first <laughs> extension, why, why there exists a necessity to, to exist. So on the very first level, we need to ask, that actually we recognize that everyone in democracy has his or her political 
uh, has his or her own political appeal, and th and this individual needs to express his or her po political appeal yeah, and yeah. democracy. This is a political right in he. Uh, 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 this is the political right that is guaranteed by democracies to yeah. every citizen, right? But what we are saying is that democracy is not only guaranteed that everyone has this right to have their own political, but also need to provide a significant and useful means in which individuals can express, can fully express their political yeah. appeals. We think political party is, uh, is the mechanism that we need. Why is that? Why we think political party systems are so important to these individuals? Because ultimately, you need to recognize that we are talking about democracies, the essence of it is the majority over the minority. Right. So we say that when you are actually expressing your own political uh, uh, val value or own political appeal, it should be proportionately reflected by the democracy. Exactly. But we say that in order to let these individuals to better express their uh, to better express their own political appeals, they should have the right to associate together and to find someone who has the same interests with them. We say political party serve this, this purpose, right? Opening government is talking about how political party is bad because ultimately it is saying that you, you vote for me and I will do something good for you. We say that exactly, okay, we are completely okay with this principle because what we are saying is, is that if you want to maximize your own political view, then you need to find someone which has the same interest with you okay, and that so. maximize that, that political appeal in the competing interest in democracy. We see that is completely okay. Opening, of, 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 opening government also talk about how political uh, party is, is only a game of capitals and how political parties can mobilize resources. Okay, we are also saying that if you want to maximize your political appeals, then you need to find more resources, find more capitals to maximize your appeals in the competing interest. We, yeah. we don't see any problem with this. So, closing government talk about the idea that how, uh, you know, citizens are irrational and they vote for a certain candidate out of emotion. Okay, we see that everyone votes for a certain candidate for different reasons, but all of this different is based on the uh, assumption that this this citizen really believe that this candidate can better represent their own interests. We don't care about what uh, they vote for this candidate out of whatsoever reasons, right? Out of emotion or out of rationality, we think it's completely okay. As long as he can recognize that this candidate actually has the same interest with me and I want to maximize my uh, uh, political appeal in democracies uh, by voting for these kind of parties, we think it's completely okay, sit down. Second level, we say that we need to uh, uh, analyze the idea that whether it is possible that every political appeal can be fully expressed in their proposal. Because Prime Minister says, oh, two parties only represent two ideologies in the countries. And that is why we have a government bench and an opposition bench in a debate. Firstly, we say, say no. Although we only have a government bench and an opposition bench, there's still we have a, lot, a lot of motions in our debate. And that is why we say, when the two political parties are, are, are expressing their own views, they are only expressing two opposing views about one uh, about a, a specific political issues. So we don't think that the, the assertions the assertion that two parties are equals to two ideology really exists in this kind uh, in this circumstances. Okay, so. No, sit down. So um, yeah, Deputy Prime Minister also talk about that they want everyone to have a say in political appeals uh, in, in democracies. Again, that is a big assertion. We have no uh, analysis why this can happen under their proposal. We have two responses. Sorry. Firstly, we say if you are the minority in democracies, then your appeals will be overwhelmed by the major majority under their proposal because no individual will have that kind of incentive to make to to make the. Uh, political appeal of the minority to be fully re 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 reflected by, uh, in democracies. But secondly, we say that actually political parties can re represent the, the interests of different groups of people. And because this kind of party need to function in democracy, they, they need to want to get more votes. They want to, more people to vote for her. And that is why this political party has the incentive to care about the social minority and actually make the social minority <coughs> to be better fully expressed in democracy. This is the tangible benefits that brought about by, by the political parties. So Prime Minister also talk about how political parties will eat up other parties and other values will be overwhelmed. But again, we say that this kind of situation can also have under their proposal, this is not the this is not not the problem exclusively brought yeah. by the by the uh, by the by, by the political party. It is the inherent problem by democracies. But we say that if we really uh, realize that the tangible benefits of democracy are much much larger than this kind of things, then we think it is the uh, it is the right way to go. So very briefly on the second issues, why it can lead to better check and balance system? Because we say that in 
political party system. We have ruling party and opposing party, right? And the, the, the reason why opposing party keep uh, questioning the, the policy carried out by the ruling party is because they have fundamentally different interests. And we say it is good for people to question the, uh, to, it is good for the opposing party to question the ruling party because of different interests. Because ultimately, um, if, the, if we just let this happen on an individual level, this kind of individual level do not have the incentive to represent the interests of the social minority. But as I have already po pointed out, the, the opposing party actually have that kind of incentive to represent that. So for all these reasons, I'm very proud to oppose the government.
political part, uh, they say that political parties will actually provide political information to the society and therefore more citizens would know more about uh, politics. However, we say that the reason why political parties do this is because of their own interests. They actually have spread these kinds of political information in favor of their own political situations. And that's why we say that this is wrong. And also about accountability, our response to this is that um, while having these kinds of parties is actually bad for the accountability as a whole, because like when, when something happens in a society, it's hard for us to find the real like uh, to find the real person uh, who's actually done do something wrong in the society because we have a party on the top and it's hard really to find the individual and to ask uh, for this accountability. And however, with individuals controlling the whole society, every individual actually has his own goals and this is actually very specific. And that's why we think that uh, it is actually good for the uh, responsibility, of, uh, the accountability in democracy. And second question is about harms and benefits of the, of the policy. It's firstly, it's about um, check and balance system. Uh, within that, uh, our partner has told you that um, because we have different interests oh. in, in this society instead of the only like several interest group in the society, we are actually trying to make the society towards a more diverse role. And we think that um, every uh, people has their own interests. The reason why we think that the diversity of interests is that, is that important in the society is because we think that the government has the responsibility to provide the society with more choices. Like by having the political groups, they may have only several like opinions. However, like by having different different individuals participating in it, we are actually having people from different social classes in the society to really uh, to really uh, engage in these kinds of. Uh, it, uh, activities and the reason why we think that it is important for people of different social classes to engage in this is that sometimes it's quite hard for the leaders and uh, people, uh, some group of people in certain political parties to really re realize every uh, problem in every single aspect in the society. But having people from different aspects, they can actually have different angles and different views towards the different things in the society. And this is, sometimes these kinds of things are actually hidden in the society, which is actually hard for those people in like some certain political parties to really realize. And also, the reason why we think that guideline is sometimes a restriction is because we know that um, sometimes like the reason uh, the political parties, in order to let people vote for them, they actually say something to this person and to, for, uh, to protect the interests of this group of person. So after being elected, these political parties will actually do something for these individuals because like, the individual has actually helped them a lot during the, uh, during the election. And we think that this is actually unfair for the other part, uh, the other group's citizens in the society because we think that we, this is actually unfair. A, an unfair distribution of resources, which would actually distribute these resources to all the social classes, uh, to people from all the social classes in the society, instead of uh, the only interest group that, it, uh, that is invol involved. Uh, so based on the above mention, we feel proud to oppose uh, to uh, pro, uh, to uh, <laughs> propose <laughs> today is talking about is not that uh, uh, today we are talking about is that why the political parties should be abolished should be never exist but our government side didn't give us any uh, constructive analysis to, to this motion. Okay. so so let me tell you what I, I think here so, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> well, I think today had uh, three clashes and firstly like mm, and it is about a uh, just how CG has told about is the true value of democracy. That is, whether can we bring more people to engage in the political issues. And secondly, it is about how to to say uh, say how to let the social minor minorities appeals to be to be spoken. And thirdly, is about uh, the benefits of check and balance system. So uh, several rebuttals before I give the clashes. Firstly, you talked about that. Uh, Firstly, you, 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 you told us about that uh, every, you, you give us a case of if you are an individual candidate, you can, uh, uh, later, I'm sorry, <laughs> you have, you, 
I think you, you guys have the same logic of the, if you are very rich and a powerful party, you are just a stand for your own party's um, stakeholders for your own party resources. But yeah. actually, if you are very rich and powerful individuals, what, do you, what have you done is to stand for yourself, to stand for your own, uh, to, to stand for your own individual. Go ahead. Lower house, yes. With other people participating in with in this our policies so has mentioned, with every individual participating, it's actually going to reduce the importance of advertisement uh, by carrying out of money politics carrying out by your political party. Okay, if I am a very rich and powerful person, I also can advise myself and to to give yeah. advertisement on the television yeah. or the newspaper. Now, everyone, you just uh, vote me, just like Hong Wang Biao, he is a very rich man, and they say, if you vote me, I will give you 200 RMB, and everybody, oh, oh, corruption. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay, let's talk about what is the true value of democracy. The true value of democracy that is to let more people to, to talk about their appeal of politics, to bring more people to engage in the politics. But actually, actually, the political parties can do this kind of things. Not just like you said that, oh, uh, because today we are talking about it's not only China, right? Uh, we are not one party. It is not one party or two parties uh, or two parties. Uh, um, Fight. It is a, you can if you are want to talk uh, to to talk about your 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 individual uh, and your political appeal. You can set up your party, right? And you we, we have a uh, numerous parties to do this kind of things. So also I do I don't think so that if we abolish political parties, we can let the social minority to engage in in their own own, own, own political appeal because the social minority can better reflect uh, can be better. Uh, Political appeal can be better reflected by the political party as well. Yeah. On and that, as my as my partner has mentioned about very clearly, that it is because that a lot of social minority they don't have the money, they even don't have the groups to tell them that I have this kind of political appeal. But if you have set up a party, they have the place to talk their appeal to them, and the party will help them to do this. Sorry. And next, what is about the check and balance system? As my uh, as my partner has told you that, if you are several parties, you can do the check and balance system. Check and check and balance system well, because firstly, I'm question questioning your efficiency. That if there are a lot of individuals, uh, how can you just? Uh, okay. How can you just? Uh, okay. To, okay. Yes. Efficiency is actually a new point you are bringing about in the last speaker's yeah. speech, which we feel extremely unfair. And secondly, how could that possibly be representative? Having a party filter the idea into one abstract concept that actually serves the minority in the top, on the top of the pyramid. Yeah, yeah. I just question your efficiency because today, none of you have told us about uh, how can you set up the policy to, 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 make this, to make this mechanism efficient. Okay, next. Uh, uh, yes. Man, the logic on the opposition bench is pretty simple. In order to create more participation by the people, we have we filter all the ideas with lesser ideas. So how does lesser ideas encourage more participants by your logic? <laughs> yeah, what do we talk about is you're just a you're just a mistake our upper house uh, understanding because our upper uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because uh, okay. Okay, madam, let me help you. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn that. You can tell me that. Yeah, ma'am. So you see, in the case of uh, Barack Obama versus Hillary Clinton, we see that the Americans don't have a chance to choose beside them because it has always been decided by the party itself. So tell us, do you think it's fair to the American public to not have a chance to choose beforehand? <laughs> okay, if you are a very rich and powerful Chen Guangbiao, if you are the president of America, that nobody, uh, that nobody can do the choice over you. So you become the... So I think you are, you are in the same logic of your case has mentioned about, uh, has mentioned about. So today, we uh, opposition side, we told you that the the true value of democracy is to bring more people to engage in the political issues, and uh, and the government bench failed to tell us that if we abolish the political parties, what kind of um, advantages will 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 you will take you will take yes, and secondly that you. You fail to tell us why the social minority's political appeal will be will be spoken if you are 
if you take individuals, take place the parties. And thirdly, it is about the check and balance system. And you, you never tell us the principle and the possibility about the check and balance system. Why your motion today can, can really work? So we are proud to oppose. Okay. I hope that all of you have enjoyed it. Now, if I